Hey guys, so this is in response to one of the questions on the Tasty Trade Facebook group on a fully funded hedge. Now I've done that for a little bit and then I moved away from it. And the reasoning uh, behind that is for a fully funded hedge, you're basically selling something to gain a premium and then buying a bear put spread or anything similar like that. Uh, with the premium receive that would try to hedge your portfolio on a downturn. Now, that is size purely based on the credit you receive by one of the sell legs, right? So, I didn't think that was proper in hedging a portfolio. To hedge a portfolio, you need to look at the portfolio on the entirety and how much drawdown you're experiencing on the portfolio and then how much you need to hedge against. So let's start with one of the example of my favorite strategy selling SPX puts 16 Delta at 45 DTE. Now here's one example where we are taking a 100,000 account to begin with and what I like to do is take the 100,000 only use up to 75% of my available margin and on IB that I use a single naked put on SPX would take up to 3,000 margin so that gives me about two ish position that I can put on so that's what I've done to trade daily up to two max active positions we'll take profit at 50% or exit at 21 DTE and we're using a 200% stop loss right so this is a back test over three years and it shows us here max drawdown negative 20% which is this portion right here uh, but that's just down from zero right so I want to really see what is the biggest move from my peak to low and that's this one here in March 2020 so I've got somewhere in about close to 17 grand and then it drops all the way down to negative 6.3 I want to figure out a way how I can hedge this uh, down move here yeah, or the drop in the portfolio so uh, the good thing about eData Pro is it shows you all the trades and you can download this into Excel which I've already done and that's there right here I've taken the open as well as the PNL column created a sort of pivot table so that I can see what is the premium received for each month. At the same time, I've also gone and looked at what is the total realized return for this period of three years. That's about 98.8 grand. And that's what I've done here, taking that 98878 divided by 36 months. My average monthly income comes to about 2.7 grand. And uh, I started off with the idea, what if I invest and just spend 5% of that monthly income to, for hedging, right? So 5% of that is about 137 that I'm gonna spend every month for a hedge. Okay, and uh, how much do I need to hedge against? So from the take of about 17 grand down to negative 6.3 grand, I need to hedge a 23 grand drop in my portfolio. So can I do that? So here's another interesting um, hedging strategy that's also been discussed in the Facebook group called VIX Ladder. The idea is you buy a VIX call at 120 DTE and you trade it monthly. That's what I've set here. I play around with different deltas as well as just setting by price. You know, what if I just paid this 137, you know, uh, all the time? What what do I get? All right. So um, here's an interesting one that I finally came to which is buying two calls at 10 delta monthly and it gives me this particular graph right here right so this is what i'm interested in it goes all the way up to 22 point about 22.5 grand during the march 2020 sell-off and that comes very close to that 23.3 grand that i need to hedge against so this looks like something that's very interesting uh, prior to that market sell-off, I would have I, I would have paid about nine hundred and fifteen dollars um, for this particular hedging. The way I'm looking at it is, my VIX is being funded by my selling SPX puts, right? So I'm just looking at a 
the granularity of a portfolio level. So uh, that's, that sounds interesting. And um, look, I've still managed to be in the positive, even though there is no profit taking. I'm just going to let this expire. There is no stop loss. I'm basically just buying and letting it expire on its own. This is this is interesting. I, I like that it goes all the way close to um, the max drawdown on my portfolio. And I'm spending. Let's look at how am I spending. If I download this Excel, that's right here, and I take an average of the premium entry premium, I'm spending an average of one hundred and four dollars a month on this. That's less than that five percent of uh, one three seven that we had earlier on. So. With less than 5% from my monthly income, I'm able to hedge the account drop. And of course, if you want to set that max profit, I think if you set about 6,000%, that would capture you know some profit from this, right? So, but uh, of course, we never know how high that would go. So um, that's just, you know, uh, I, I think realistically, and, and when that happens, you know, we would take profit at a different point in time. So that's um, something for you to play with. Right? So I was also interested um, as I was doing this video to see. So here's one example of a common fully funded or self-funded hedging where I'm actually buying two bear puts and selling one uh, further down to fund this uh, entire position. If you look at the trade lock, the premium that I receive is a small credit for each one of them. And 120 DTE traded monthly as well. So what does the graph look like? You may have already <laughs> looked at this. Um, it's actually down close to 17 grand during the March sell off. Um, we, we thought this was a hedge, uh, but what happened? Anytime a position is self-funded, you will always be short a position because that's where you are generating the extra premium to pay for itself. And that particular short position is going to drop when the market drop as well. Um, you'll also see that you'll actually be using a margin for this because you have an extra short position. So you're reducing the uh, amount of positions you can sell on your main strategy. And on top of that, um, you may say that we should exit this once it comes in the middle of that uh, 35 to 40 DTE range, right? Uh, and to take profit, but that means it's not going to be able to further hedge against, you know, uh, further drop in your position. You want something that will continue to rise in value the further the price drops, right? And having a short, an extra short here, um, it's going to defeat that purpose, right? And, and this is very clearly shown in the graph. Um, a VIX having long call is one where value will rise all the way as the market drops. So that's something interesting. Um, I didn't expect this truly, um, before I did this video, I thought this was you know, a, a, a nice way to hedge and I've used this you know, in the past before, but I've switched to thinking that I should look at what's the income from my portfolio and then spending a part of that income on something that gives me uh, a huge payout when a drop happens. Uh, I, I didn't expect it. this particular H, uh, a fully funded H, to perform badly until I've done the bad testing. So um, I hope this is an interesting video for you guys and I hope that gives you an idea on how you'd like to size your H, how much you'd uh, like to pay for it uh, and I, I still think that you should look at your entire portfolio, how much you are able to generate from your portfolio. Um, sometimes you can look at what is the, the portfolio theta uh, as a premium seller and how much you are, are paying um, for that hedging and the theta for that hedge as well. Right? So 
Uh, I hope this video has been useful. Uh, see you again soon.